And we're back with some more satisfactory. And today we're going to do a quick upgrade. You see, we've got some power here, but we need more. So I'm thinking we'll just chuck on a couple of extra power generators over here. One quick jump forward in time, and there we go. An extra 128 power generators and a tiny bit of sleep deprivation. All right, then. That should handily cover all our power production needs for at least the near, near future. That's 32,850 megawatts. Oh, God. Also, also we stuck in a few batteries. I, I don't know why, but it just seemed appropriate considering the amount of these we built in. Also, we may have done a couple of other things. And by a couple of other things, I mean we, we sort of went around and grabbed the last of the hard drives as well. I mean, you know, I was just on a roll. And it was the middle of the night and I wasn't going to be recording any audio. But uh, we've knocked out all of the recipes we possibly can. We're down to infused uranium fuel cells, which we'll actually accept. Uh, the plan, though, in the top right there you can see the objectives the complete phase four for those we need four thousand something assemblers four thousand actually let's head back to base you see we want to get ourselves up to producing about well enough of those that it'll knock it all out in a reasonable time frame so i'm thinking to start at least we're going to go with four of those assembly machines those uh, assembly directors four of the yeah say four of these assembly directors four magnetic field generators one thermal propulsion rocket and one nuclear pasta per minute so that means we'll knock it all out in a thousand minutes which is about oh 16.66 hours which still a long time a long time but it's doable now if you check in under here well we'll start that way and we'll see how much how we can go on from there now under here we've knocked out all of these basic ones uh, the only thing I did off screen was supercomputers. I added those in at the end. Where is it? Uh, yes, these things, supercomputers. I just wanted to get those out of the way with so we could get a few more recipes. And, you know, it was the middle of the night and I wasn't going to be recording audio. Now, that still leaves us, uh, was it fused modular frames? Or it's fused modular frames and we're going to need cooling systems. Oh, and we're also going to need turbo motors and electromagnetic control rods. But uh, we're going to rip out the supercomputers now and replace them. Namely being because we found a better recipe. This is currently how we're producing supercomputers. It's the basic recipe and we had all these items on our bus. So it was very easy to set this up and knock out a few hundred computers just to get us started. I put this in before we did the power upgrade. However, there is a second... Well, actually there's two other recipes we can use that if I recall. But the one we're going to use is the alternate state, super state computer. This requires batteries and electro electromagnetic control rods. We couldn't start with this because we didn't have the technology for it. To get electromagnetic control rods, you actually need a to knock out a tech that requires supercomputers. So, yeah, it's one of those chicken and the egg scenarios. However, now that we have that tech knocked out, we can start doing electromagnetic control rods. This here is all the potential recipes for the supercomputer, and it gets really annoyingly complicated. But the problem is, while we do have all of these already on the bus and being produced, and it's quite simple to make, we don't have cooling systems on the bus, and we don't have electromagnetic control rods, and we don't have batteries on the bus. So, working this out as to how much it was going to cost in total and how much we were going to have to pull off our bus, well, first I had to figure out, well, which electromagnetic control rod recipe are we going to use, which battery recipe are we going to use, uh, which cooling system recipe we're going to use, because there's also multiple cooling system recipes, before I could figure out all of these. And, he, and with figuring out all of those, this was the numbers I came up with. Now, we're going to be redoing rubber and plastic in the near future, so you can actually look at rubber and plastic as being interchangeable. 500 plastic or 500 rubber, they effectively work out at the same to produce. So this is more like, say, 756 rubber slash plastic. So it's actually slightly less than this one down here, which uses 810 rubber. This requires both rubber and plastic, but still quite less. We're going with these control rods one, namely because this here requires an awful lot of aluminum. And all of it is actually in just one single type, aluminum casing. And it's going to want, well, based on our end gold numbers, it's going to want a lot of aluminum casing, slightly more than we're making. We're making 200 of this per minute, which I thought was overkill. But it turns out if we go with that recipe, as in uh, this cooling recipe, yeah, we're going to use an awful lot of them. So we're not going to use that particular recipe. Instead, we're going to end up using this alternative with the control rods because it works out about right, it's not too stressful on our copper ingot supply. It's not too stressful on pretty much any of our supplies. It's a nice even keel type of recipe. That's why we're going with it. Uh, then, of course, we still need to actually build the parts that go with it. So there's the electromagnetic control rods, which means we have to work out the numbers for those as well. Yeah, like I said, it's getting weird. But the electromagnetic control rods alternative with the high speed controllers actually works out 
quite efficient. So I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put together the electromagnetic control rods. Then we're going to stick together the batteries. The batteries are also interesting, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Let's just, let's just do the control rods. This is actually fairly straightforward. It only requires two ingredients, and we don't even need that many of them. Easy peasy. Satyrs, high-speed connectors, they all run in here. We're just pulling them off the bus. The joy of the bus design is even if something requires a bunch of random ingredients, you've normally got them lying about the place, as opposed to uh, regular designs, you'd have to bring in all the stuff from varied locations. All right, that gets that onto our bus. Uh, let me just go find a free line. So yes, I will admit the cost of extending this is getting more and more expensive the further we go. And yeah, there's a free line right there. To make these wonderful batteries we're using, we're going to need sulfur. Uh, the sulfur is there's actually a note of it right beside our starting base. Well, beside is maybe a little bit of a stretch, but it's close enough that we can use a transport belt to bring it back to our base and come on. Bring it up here. We're splitting off a bit down there. That's where we're uh, producing the gunpowder for our pipe bombs. I mean, nobelisks, whatever you call them. They're, they're pipe bombs. And then it all comes all the way along here. And yeah, it, it passes horrifically through that uh, limestone line, but who cares? Then it zips all the way along below the factory until we get to here where it's completely black and we can barely see anything and there you go we have now got sulfur onto our main bus done one other huge advantage of this battery recipe it does not require a luminous solution or sulfuric acid yeah, these are both liquids, and no. Uh, also, it outputs water, which is a complication. This classic battery recipe, we already have Alclad, we already have plastic, and wire is easy for us to make. So all we really need to do is add sulfur to the bus, which is solid, goes on a transport belt, is very simple to add. So I think while this would be slightly more efficient, we don't have to bring any bauxite nearby, we don't have to, well, we would need to bring two new resources, plus we'd need water, plus we'd need to deal with the water output. Not worth it. While this would be cheaper, no. We're doing this because it's far, far simpler and it still fits within our budget. And by within our budget, I mean, I'll you know, say this. This is all the, this, this is, I've gone back to this a few times. This is how much resources it's going to take to finish our target goal of four assembly directors, four magnetic field generators, one nuclear pastor, one thermal propulsion rocket per minute. As you can see, it's a confusing mess of lines and things like that. But all I need to look at is the basics in, basics out, and it should work out okay. Now, we don't need that many of these battery things, so we should only need about one of these to produce enough, but we're going to stick in two for now, but we're going to want a, a backlog of these, or at least a stockpile of these, because we're going to need them to produce some things. So yeah, a couple of these manufacturers for now should tide us over, so let's get started. Putting together the batteries is not that hard. I'm really enjoying this main bus design. All we need is sulfur, al alclad, plastic, and wire. Now, wire is the only tricky one because we don't keep wire on the bus, namely because it's just too dense. So you'd, you'd saturate a belt in no time. So instead, we bring in copper ingots and caterium to make the wire on site, which means we bring that in from the front. So we've got copper and caterium coming in here. Uh, that gets fed into the machines. The machines spit out 90 wire per minute. And it just so happens that this consumes 90 wire per minute, so that should keep that thing running perfectly smoothly. Then all we have to do is plug in the other three ingredients. Sulfur, alclad, and plastic, and all three of those, they're already on the bus. So we've got, okay, where's it? Plastic back here. So, oh, sorry, this is alclad back here. We'll just chuck that in after the auto save finishes to there. And uh, then we've got plastic, which can go in, no, damn it, right there. And then finally, we have sulfur, which is back here. And yes, I know I'm clipping through everything. It's just, I don't care. Conveyor belt is too long. Oh, come on. Eh, no problem. So what we can do is just do that. Delete that belt so it doesn't look quite as horrific. I mean, it's almost as horrific, but not quite perfectly horrific. Then we chuck that in there. Done. And that thing starts up. Then all we do is just uh, extend on the belts, of course, so that the resources flow through to the next section. They look so wonky. You know what? It doesn't matter. They may look wonky, but we've got batteries. Batteries are being produced. That's all that matters. Now, what was next on the agenda? I think it was supercomputers. Yeah, we've got electromagnetic control rods and we've got batteries. Now that both of those are on the bus, we can then get around to making the supercomputer variant we wanted because it's a little bit more efficient than our previous one. So yeah, 
this shouldn't be too bad. Plus it takes 45 copper wire to make. We can just, and we make 90 using our variant, so we can stick one of those in the middle and run two of these, no problems. How much do these produce? 2.4 per minute? Yeah, perfect. That was relatively painless. Uh, over here we've got an assembly machine taking in copper and caterium and making the 90 wire. That 90 wire comes down here and gets fed into both of these machines. And then we brought in the other three resources off our bus, the other three resources being computers, electromagnetic control rods, and batteries, which were very easy to find because we just started making those last two very recently. Our bus is getting a little bit large though. Uh, actually, let's go and have a, a quick look at it. As you can see, it's a little bit of a mess of, oh my god, we're up to five rows, that's just... We're up to a ridiculous amount, but it works. I mean, so far we've got a little bit of everything. It's, uh... It's weird, but I quite enjoy playing it this way. All right, uh, with all of that done, it's time for the next setup, and that is, oh, that's going to be a little bit different. You see, the problem is the next one up is going to require nitrogen gas. In the hub here, you can see to unlock turbo motors, Mark III miners, which I'm looking forward to, and thermal propulsion rockets, we need fused modular frames, and they require nitrogen gas as one of their components. Uh, this next one gets even more complicated because it's going to require turbo motors and cooling systems, but we'll worry about that in a minute. What we're going to worry about now is fused modular frames and nitrogen gas. This here is the two options for making these fused modular frames. And you'll notice this one, the alternative, requires fuel, which, just know, it also requires aluminum ingots. And there was no way I was going to be shipping aluminum ingots here. We ship everything as either aluminum casing or al alclad. So... I would have had to make some changes, and plus I didn't want to put fuel on the bus. As is, we've got to put nitrogen gas on the bus. Nitric acid requires you to combine nitrogen and water to make it. So if we check under here, you can see yeah, we're not we're not bothered doing that. Instead, we can just use the, the nitrogen gas straight up, which mil will mean we're going to have to put nitrogen gas, but we're not going to put it on the bus. We're just going to bring it underneath because this should be the only thing that requires it. The problem is we have to get nitrogen gas. This here is a bird's eye view of our base. There's our... Uh, space elevator, there's our last factories we put together as in the, the supercomputers over there. So that's our base right there, and what we need is nitrogen gas. The nitrogen gas is over here. I'm probably just going to pipe it. The reason being, we're going to be building what we want right there, and I mean, we're already piping oil from that distance. We could, of course, put it onto the train line, but I just don't see the point. We'll go over and have a look anyway. It's just this, this is sort of a, a gas geyser we're going to have to plug in stuff to make it work. I'm not exactly too sure, to be honest, but uh, I suppose we'll find out when we get there, won't we? Well, we have found our nitrogen geyser. Uh, it appears that there looks to be where you place the building then, as in you put a resource well pressurizer here. And that doesn't actually give you nitrogen. What it does is it pressurizes this so that you can extract nitrogen from those side po points. Uh, let's go plug in one of these and see what it gives us. You, resource well extractor. Uh, to place this on an active fracking satellite node. But, you know, this thing requires power. God damn it. Fine, fine, fine. You mean I can't place it until I power it either? That's a bit annoying. Okay, I'll be back in a few minutes with the power. This uh, concrete thing up there, that actually leads all the way back to our base. I made it like a concrete path out. Why not? Well, it seems once we power this thing, yeah, these things start spewing a little bit. All right, then. Ah. I do like the animations they've thrown in. All right, let's get this started. Uh, Production-wise, we need a resource extraction well. Okay, perfect. You know what? Let's stick one over there. I'm not sure if we're going to need all of these, but why not? Eh, how much are these going to give us? 120? Oh, wow, we don't. Trying really hard? What? Never mind. Uh, you. Uh, we're gonna bring you over to, we'll say, about here. We'll stick on a little cross-section pipey about right about there. And uh, hook these suckers all up. As far as I'm aware, gas and liquids are treated the same in this game. And then we'll hook you up to there. We're gonna need some liquid pumps for that. No, that's a Mark 1. Give me a Mark 4 pump. That should go right about there. Yeah, I have a feeling this is going to take a lot of power to get this up. We could start packaging them, but that's just a whole bunch of effort I'm not willing to get involved in. Eh, how are you looking? Head lift. Come on, you can figure it out. I'm beginning to think gas doesn't need any kind of pumping. Uh, let's hook it up at the top and find out. We don't really need that much gas anyway. I think we need about 140. 
what, 40 or 120 or something, not an awful lot of gas. So let's get to the top, plug it in and see how much throughput we get, if any. Coming all the way to the top, this does seem to work. All right then. Uh, that's all the gas all the way down there. Damn, that was a hell of a long run. But that gives us this pipe, which runs all the way through here, which runs all the way back that direction towards our base, which you can just about see in the distance. All right, I'm going to do a quick jog back. Well, we now have a gas line of nitrogen. Well, it, it's sort of here. It's not quite there yet, but, you know, it's a long distance. It's trying to catch up. Uh, and up here is where we're going to use it all to produce... Wait, what did we want to produce again? I I've forgotten. It's been that long. Ah, uh, there we are. Fused modular frame. A corrosion-resistant, nitrite-hardened, highly robust, yet lightweight modular frame. All right, this is pretty handy. We just need nitrogen gas, which, okay, not that handy, but then the fused mo heavy f modular frames and just some of that, what is it? Yeah, aluminum casing. Both of those are already on the bus. So, yeah, give me a minute. I think we'll just plug in two of these and we should be done. You know, the animations on this thing are pretty awesome, though I have no idea how that sort of animation equates to producing... What is it they're making again? Fused modular frames. Um, eh, whatever. But it was fairly straightforward once we got the gas in. We just needed the two ingredients off the bus, which were the heavy modular frames and the aluminum casing. As for the gas itself, turns out that was pretty handy. We just, well, piped it in. We piped in the gas right there, and it feeds up to, where is it? Right there. We just brought it up in the center, split it out, and fed it into two of these blenders. These blenders can mix liquids and gases with solids, and this is how you end up with the fused modular frames. That takes care of... I think we've only got about two other main ingredients and that'll be it. Well, we have to do a whole bunch of backfilling though. I mean, our factory's not perfectly balanced in terms of, well, I'm pretty sure that if we ran this flat out, this thing would eat a whole, maybe probably eat all of our modular frames. We might not be able to keep up with that. Uh, same with some of the computers and stuff. We might run out of plastic, rubber. There's things that need backfilling, especially the plastic and rubber. But in here, we've got 20 fused modular frames. And once we hit 50, we can knock out another tech or none of the other tiers. But let's go have a quick look at the factory. All right, all aboard. Let's do this. And the factory is looking... It's looking nice. Yeah, it looks a little bit skinny, though. It's long and skinny, and we definitely need to bump up some of the production values. Uh, oh, definitely on steel. We're going to need to really drastically pump up steel. And I think I'm going to turn that entire section back there into... Actually, we're going to move the entire oil section down to the ocean. And just... Uh, belt up a full belt of plastic and ah rubber well not a full belt we don't need 780 of each but we'll be definitely putting in a bit more and i should definitely switch to the jetpack that is that's pretty all right once we'll be back we'll cut back in a minute i just want to wait until the fuse modular frames are ready and then once they're done we're gonna knock out the next level of tech 50 fused modular frames later we are ready to knock that out done 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 all right, Milestone. first thing we want to do, though, Turbo. skip that text, and then go in here and grab hard drives. The reason being is we don't want to use the default recipe. This here is all the available recipes for turbo motors. And it gets all... Like, we are so deep down a rabbit hole at this point, it's ridiculous. For example, like, oh, radio control units. On radio control units, we've got the choice between all these different recipes, and we took the default one. But you got to remember, we're using an alternative computer recipe, an alternative crystal oscillator recipe, and the aluminum casing we're shipping in from remotely, and we can't really go above 200 of these per minute. If we go above 200 of these per minute, we don't actually produce more than that, so we'd have to go back and bump up the production. So, it, it gets really complicated, but this here is uh, all of the resources it takes for each one of them. This is the one we're going to end up using. It's a bit odd, but it saves us on steel ingots. This one I can't use because the amount of steel it's consuming is, is just ridiculously high compared to the other two. This one comes out lowest on the steel. We can afford the copper, caterium, and quartz hit. Honestly, all of those are... We're coming out quite easy on those. As in, if we go check under this, let's say, grab... Uh, oh. Caterium ore. We're only going to use 239 caterium ore total to get our required output, just because of all the alternative recipes we're using. We're not even going to need one full mine of caterium ore, well, assuming it's a pure node, to run our base. So we're not really that worried. Raw quartz-wise, look at that, 600 and... 
two. We only need one quartz mine, and we've got two that we're using, so we don't really care about the quartz. Copper gets a little bit trickier. Now, I don't want to get too much into details of the end game because uh, this is going to be a few, a couple of episodes ahead. But copper-wise, you can minus 1,200 off of that because of copper powder. So realistically, we're only looking at about 532. We'll be importing the copper powder from elsewhere. So yeah, I, this was more less about the raw resources being consumed and more about spreading out the load to reduce the draw on some resources and balance things evenly, which is why we're using this particular turbo motor recipe, which requires electromagnetic control rods does mean we're going to need to research the alternative, and since we've just unlocked it, there's two potential recipes we could get, but it should be fine. We should only have three potential options to get, so we should be able to get this straight away with our single attempt. And... would you look at that, there's the only... <laughs> Wait, we couldn't get the other one? I s we should have got two alternative recipes. Oh, I presume that's not unlocked until we get the next level of tech. Eh, well, that gives us the one we were looking for anyway, so... No big deal. Alright, let's throw together turbo motors. This should hopefully be not too painful. The resource consumption of this turbo motor factory is going to be a little high. Mm, Jesus, 8.4 radio control units per minute. Christ. And we gotta remember, those radio control units we're making with, I think it's alternative recipe, no, we're using them as a standard recipe. So that means it's using 32 by 8 uh, aluminum cladding. Uh, oh my god. Uh, sorry, aluminum casing. 8.4 computers and 8.4 crystal oscillators. I'm going to need to really beef up the back end of this factory right now because I'm pretty sure this is going to eat to all of our reserves. Also, that was, um, yeah, that was our last free section on the bus. So we're going to have to put in a sixth row. It just, the amount of Alclad we need to use to extend this on, it just exponentially grows because we now have to extend, well, five by six 30 30 transport belts this is the downside of running such a such a centralized system but on the bright side we're able to just pull off whatever resources we need and it really cuts down on the mental stuff you have to do though uh, by much yeah yeah it's definitely much more straightforward and it looks pretty we have already produced enough turbo motors that we can use them to unlock the last three hard drive canisters that are lying out at about the place or crash sites that's going to be quite handy. It means we will definitely be able to unlock every single recipe in the game. There will be nothing left out. But the more important thing today was we unlocked Miner Mark 3s. This allows us to build the best mines possible. They can You can crank them up and they can crank out 720 resources per minute on a pure node and 600 on a normal node. This is just an incredible amount. Of, like, this is what's going to allow us to back upgrade the entire factory. As well as that, we have access to... Mark 5 transport belts, which are the fastest transport belts, Mark 2 pumps, Mark 2 pipes. We can now actually start backfilling everything and cranking everything up to the max, just to get ready for our, our final run. Uh, at the same time, where is it? We've also got access to all of the production stuff. Basically, we've knocked out everything we need to produce all of the, the background stuff. Oh, there is actually two things left. I think it's heat sinks and cooling units, but we're not using them as part of any recipes, so we're actually okay on those. We'll, we'll, we'll throw them in. It's just they're the only two items that we haven't got on the belt because we don't need them for what, are, what we have planned. Power-wise, if you're ever doing a mass power build, do be aware of these little plus symbols here. Like, if you click the, click the plus symbol on this, it gives you this to-do list over here that tells you how much of all of the ingredients you need to actually produce that unit. Or what you can do is say, just say you're going to be producing 64 of them. You can tell it that, and then you can go around and collect all the necessary resources to cut down on the amount of running back and forth. Very, very handy. However, do be aware if you do something like, oh, say, add in, we're going to need a whole bunch of refineries as well, or something like that. You can add in so many that it actually goes off the screen. For example, here on the right side of the screen, there's quite a lot there, but if you actually tab in, there's more. So you have to scroll up and down. But every time you go and access any type of... Uh, storage container, you'll be able to go in here and scroll up and down and find out what you want. Very, very incredibly handy. I can't believe I didn't know about this before. And if you do want to wipe everything quickly, you can just go back in here and stick in a zero. It gets rid of it a lot. This just saved me a spectacular amount of time. But yes, power is done, resources done. All we need to do is upgrade the factory in, in time for the final, well, the final production run, which will be all of those items up the top right. I'm also hoping to sort of double it after we're finished, but we'll, we'll see how the main bus holds up to what we're planning. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck.